It's always good to see you. You're leaving us. I'm leaving. Will you come back? Yes, we'll be back. Thank God for that. Yes, we'll be back. <laughs> well, probably. Who knows? Um, but your person I wanted to talk to before we left. Sure. Now, you know I've always admired you. Thank you. And particularly your get up and go. I mean, you came over here with like, you know, a backpacker kind of thing. I came here with nothing. Nothing. At my wedding, finished now, unfortunately. But uh, my brother stood up and said, "I came here with nothing but the." Names and addresses and telephone numbers of 800 journalists. Oh, that always <laughs> works. That always works. So the thing through your career is that you've just kept going. And, I mean, the whole, the whole life change experiment is, is looking at people who have changed their life and have made changes in other people's lives. And what gives you the get up and go to do that? What gives you the motivation to do that? I love people. I think yeah. that's, you know, I just love people. I love talking to people. And I think... Uh, Everybody's got a story, and if you just stop and talk to people, look them in the eyes and just focus on them, you'll find that story and ask them questions. Uh, okay, so you must have lots of bad times, good times, you know, we read about it in the paper. How do you get through those kind of things? What, I'm relating it to people in everyday life who yeah. have bad moments. Because you're in front of the, you know, the press in general, your moment, bad moments are that much more emphasised. So what do you do to... To deal with that. I, I don't even think I don't think I have any bad moments. Oh, it's okay. all good. Oh, yeah, good. Just, it's all just moving on and doing my stuff. And and there's something I, I always remember. There's three words that I use in my life, and everybody can use in their life, whether it's their personal, business, problems, successes. Focus, persistence, enthusiasm. Right. If you use those three words with anything you're trying to do or achieve, you'll win every time, hundred percent guarantee. Okay. Now you just said to me. Um, I don't think I've ever had any bad moments. Now, what I've been thinking about recently is I've read a lot of these books, self-help books and the, and the like, and I've spoken to a lot of people, and, and then I want to be able to stay positive. And how much of that is what you say and how much of it is what you do? What I mean is, do you get up in the morning and go, oh, I feel like crap, this, this sucks. No, you know what? I feel good. Is it a conscious effort to say, make a statement like that? Or do you just legitimately Feel a million bucks all the time. I do. And really? People, people ring me up and say, "How are you going?" I say, "I'm sensational. I'm really? fantastic." I just—it's an automatic. It's I'm, I'm 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 on that level. I'm high on life. I love life. It's not. I don't do drugs. Mm -hmm. I might have a glass of wine. I have a drink sometimes. But I mean, I, I don't smoke. I just love. I think I think I'm very fortunate. That I've got a fantastic life. I lead a great life. I enjoy myself. I'm very at one with, you know, I can look in the mirror and come from who I am, what I am. And I just love, as I say, it comes back to people. I enjoy spending time with people. So what you've done, in essence, is um, associate people with bringing you joy. So you'll, you'll find pleasure in meeting different people. Absolutely. And, and okay. And hopefully I can, I might help them more. And, and, and the other thing, there's a guy who died recently, Mike Robleski, founded the, the Sydney Kings. His philosophy was to be told all this stuff. Anytime somebody rings and wants help, just say yes. We'll work out how to do it, just say yes. It's a wonderful view of life. Po being positive in yourself, with yourself, about yourself. Even though, you know, I'd like to lose some weight, I'm not, you know, I'm not desperate uh, about it, but you know, I could do with losing 10 kilos, but I'm not worried about it. I just, it's just being happy in myself. Okay, so what would you say to the multitude of people at home, you know, and I've been in this position, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this whole thing, where you're sitting on the couch and you think, my life sucks, I can't get out of this funk, yeah. I want so much more for myself, but I just can't do it. Be grateful for what you've got. There's somebody a lot worse than you. Thank God, we're living in Australia, the sunshine. Yeah. We're not living in Baghdad where there's, yeah, yeah. With, you know, could get killed the next day, or that day, or bomb might blow. I mean, we're so fortunate. We're living in a free democratic society. And you know what? Even if I was living in Baghdad, and I was free in my life, I'm still better off than somebody else who's living in the bloody yeah. hills of Afghanistan. Like, That's true. You know, I could get you a nice five-bedroom cave in Bora Bora. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, I, I really think we, should, we have to be grateful. For, we have fantastic lives. We're, we're alive, we're healthy. If you're just sitting there with skin, you've got no money, you can breathe, you're better than the person who hasn't got one leg. And the person who's got one leg thinks, God, how lucky am I? I've got one leg, you've got no leg. Like, there's, so it's a perspective th thing. Absolutely. And, and do you consciously make that leap in your mind? I mean, obviously it's automatic I mean, now, but did you ever at any stage have to go, geez, what about the poor people in Africa? No, I don't. It's only when people bring it up and say, oh, dude, oh, I had a bad day. I said, you're not having a bad day. Look outside. You can walk out of here and walk down to the beach if you want. 
you know what my brother sometimes would say to me? I'd, I'd ring up and say, oh, I'm having a bad day. And he'd say, go out with $10 in your pocket for today. Don't, go, don't, don't get into your BMW, don't do this. Go, go, and, go and spend some time at the local hospital helping them, helping people less fortunate than yourself. We are so fortunate. And see, because you do help a lot of people um, in your line of work, so perhaps that just makes it easier for you to have a better perspective on things, do you think? Maybe if I can help people, I help them. At the end of the day, I just think I'm very lucky. Okay. And I love people. Okay. Now, one other thing, um, you do change a lot of lives, um, you know, some for the better, some for the worse, depending on you know, how the publicity all spins out. One of the things that I think a lot of people the illusions that they're under is that if they seek fame, if they seek you know, media attention or um, to become the next Britney Spears, their life will get better. Now, what do you say about that? Because you see behind the lives of a lot of these seven. I mean, you know everybody and you know them much more intimately than most people. Do you see a bunch of really happy people living their dream or do you see a bunch of frustrated people or a combination? The higher up that totem pole you get, the better your life is, there's no doubt about it. The more, the more you give, the more you shall receive. I mean, and that's, it, people, I think they have happy lives. I mean, and some people find God, some people are happy with their family, but you definitely, you know, that uh, you'd, you'd rather be unhappy and wealthy than yeah. unhappy yeah, and skinned, yeah. right? But I, I really think the people I meet, I, I, and I think you get on with people that, because of your personality or whatever, I see. The, I always see the good in people. But but a lot of the people whose lives you change are just regular people that you pluck off the street for you know something has happened to them. Yeah. With a person like that, are they when they get the fame that they thought they always wanted? Do they often find it isn't what they expected? It's, it's, you have to do a case by case scenario with each people. You know, some people handle it differently. Yeah. Some people want to to do things differently. I, I definitely think that um, it all comes down to life experience. And the, the, the younger you are, maybe you don't grasp it as, as well. As you get older, you appreciate things more. That's true. Okay. So what would your advice be um, to people who want to change their life? I mean, you're, you have a, an above average sense of well-being. And I don't know whether it's a, you know, a chemical thing, whether it's something that you've taught yourself yeah, over chocolate, the years. Ice chocolate, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. every time oh, for me. <laughs> great looking girlfriends, that always helps. But whatever it is, it's working for me. <laughs> so I want to distill what it is that makes Max smile like this. And you're saying that there's no conscious, you make no conscious effort to be who you are. You don't get up in the morning and go, I'm going to have a great day. You don't say, no. all, all of the other celebs, uh, sports stars that I've interviewed, they've all got up and they've said some form of a mantra. I'm going to be the best or today I'm going to train harder than ever. <laughs> you just get up and... I get there. up, I open that window. I mean, at the moment I'm living in a beautiful home, so I open the window and I look out at the Pacific Ocean I think, how lucky am I? Um, what about when you were back in the early days before you had anything? Yeah, when I lived in uh, Weatherall Park, I'd still wake up and look forward to my day. I, you know, I look forward to my day, I look forward to going to work, I look forward to doing the things I do, and even if there's challenges there, one mate of mine, uh, Hans Torf, used to say, uh, write down that, you've got that list of things you've got to do, do the hardest one first, because everything else is easier afterwards. And do you do that? Absolutely, you know, take, you know, take the bull by the horns and go for it. And what happens when you get rejections on the phone? What happens when someone blasts you in the papers? What happens? How do you take that? You move on, what's the worst that can happen? You, you know, the, I once spoke to a guy called Terry McCauliffe. Terry McCauliffe raised hundreds of millions of dollars for both of President Clinton's election campaigns. And I wanted to try and ask him how to raise money. And I had a, a very fortunate uh, in New York to get five minutes with him. And I said to him, how, how do you raise money? You know, what do you do? Is there any secrets? So, you know, just ask. What's the worst they can do? They'll say no. You know, just ask. And it's the same. As I say, we like to just have to you know, take that step. You know, step over the edge for some people, but do it. You're not going to fall.